great culture shock. And to be honest with you, I have to share it. You can't go through a culture shock without sharing it. Otherwise, you become a living lie. So the culture shock was, you know, I'm a very strong anti-colonialistic thinking and neo-colonialistic thinking. But I didn't realize that neo-colonialistic or colonialistic thinking in the education is such a deep-rooted thing that you can only call it egoistic jargon. <laughs> that you can only call it egoistic education. Just training up people to be rough, tough, smart, get your benefit at any cost. Now the implication of that is extreme. To, to tell you a few details, to just get you an idea of what I'm studying, it was about the education as it is being applied in Finland today. Finnish kids only go to school three to four hours a day. And there is no homework. And they do not have multiple choice answers. When you're supposed to pass some test, you're supposed to show that you realized about it. It's a very unique way of approach, which of course brings to my thinking the Vana Ashrama education so much. Vana Ashrama education is based on quality in work. What's your quality? Guna, karma, vivaga, cha, Krishna says. See, divisions in, in, amongst man is created by quality in work. That's all. So, I didn't know about the Finnish system. It was just brought to my attention. And the most funny thing is, no, not funny, they are ranking number one in educational success in the planet. Number one. United States is number 26. Number one in the educational system by practically going to school to play. Another thing. They have zero private schools. All schools are one. Rich and poor all go to the same school and there's no fees. Nobody pays for it. I mean, in Chile, the private schools is the big power of the government and the politicians. They all have huge private schools. Here in India, they have all these huge technological institutes going up. Hmm? It's a big business. And they create the business by a competition full of anxiety and only I, me, mine, I, me, mine. So the world is in a very... I mean, <laughs> I went to school too, not so long, for God's sake. <laughs> but it was bad enough. 
I mean, when you hear that, when you see that, you see the normal schools in the world, they just make people sick. I wonder whether they have any bullying in, 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 in Finland. I would, I would guess almost not, because they are so socially just educated that, of course I'm speculating here, but the main thing of the whole thing is that we have to teach people to be happy. Now what does that mean? That was another thing. Then, second culture shock was Alzheimer. Loss of memory, loss of mental ability. So we have a theory about that. Nobody knows exactly what it is. Some people start having Alzheimer at quite young age. But they said it was about some plaque building up in the brain, <clears throat> which comes from this and that. Everybody had some ideas. So there is one study. It's called the Nun Study. And then somebody messed with my <coughs> amplifier cable there, as is common. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so can take this whole thing off. So, <coughs> the nun study studied old ladies who were nuns and who were doing great amount of service and performance in their life. And when they were old, their brain was studied and it turned out that they were having high degrees of plaque plaque built up in their brain. Their brains looked like intensive state of Alzheimer, but they were highly intelligent till the very last end, passing tests and absolutely no sign. So the whole idea is first of all about Alzheimer, we know nothing. The guesswork goes that when people believe in what they're doing, when people are happy with what they're doing, their spiritual or their mental ability will find a way to survive. The, the, these studies, they show very interesting elements about life which we, in a way, always believe in. We always believe in the dynamics of natural defenses, that you naturally defend yourself because because you have the ability to do things when you want to do them it's all about joy <coughs> do you like to do it then you will do it do you want to learn it then you will learn it do you have some motivation in this direction? Then everything will be wonderful. Even difficult tasks will become easy 
when you want do it and conquer them. The reason you may want it may be different. Some may be ambition and this or that, but basically this wanting element is is a joy element. It comes with neurotransmitters which shower you with abilities to acquire and adjust and situate situations. So the joy factor is so important. So how do we provide a joy factor in our Krishna conscious movement. I am always saying in my own estimation that the greatest gift Krishna consciousness can give to the world, don't come in the class with this. Class has begun, that's the end. Just sit down. Just makes me nervous. The Krishna conscious uh, system is that you are very happy with very little things. This is really a key note. And you can tell us, because okay, maybe you have an iPad, because you use it for your service. And maybe you're happy about having it. But it's a tool. If you don't get into all this Facebook stupidity, ego, uh, old stuff, if you just use it for some useful things. Like I used the iPad this morning to know these things about the education. <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't be in that culture shock. Because I went to a school which was totally wound up in the opposite way. And that my school was still good. Nowadays, schools have cut out poetry, cut out arts, cut out music. They're just math, physics, chemics, tests. It's really hellish. All stuff you have to learn which are practically useless for your life. <laughs> And if you don't pass them, then you will look the point like stupid. Just because you didn't like it, you become seen as a stupid, as a failure. Really, it's amazing. So the joy factor in this, in Krishna consciousness, why do we go on Parikrama? Because we want to. Why do we climb hills based in, in holy waters? even though they don't look really like a clean swimming pool with all, always uh, chlore inside, supposed to kill the germs. <laughs> huh? Why do we do that? Because we want to. That's how we survive our difficulties. Why do we live together with many people from different backgrounds and we do not fight? It's because we don't want to fight. We are not supposed to fight, but it's because it's our own ideal. That is what has us follow these things and tolerate. And we are vegetarians because we believe that prasadam is really the best food. It's not a suffering for us. Oh, I cannot eat this. Oh, that. No. You don't want to eat that stupid stuff. As a matter of fact, when we eat in a restaurant, we are not feeling comfortable. It's not prashat. Of course, you use the air and the Krishna Jai Prabhupada. So you make some kind of mental adjustment offering, but it's not. I mean, he's in a restaurant, it's not the same. It's not that prashat. Which you get in the temple. So, so that is the, the, the reality is that we are invited to live a simple lifetime like drugs. Nobody would 
light up a cigarette here right now. No way. Of course, cigarette lighting up is becoming increasingly unpopular, even in the normal world, you know? You, if anybody pulls out a cigarette, everybody goes, you want to smoke here? Get out. Go to the smoking area. Go to the to the hellish area where everything is smoke infested. Don't contaminate our environment. So, but what does speak of pulling out a bottle of whiskey and say, mm -hmm. so he say Prabhu, Prabhu, please, please, what's happening? You need medicine? You're sick? Or what, what's happening? No, I just want to get drunk. Oh, come on. Giving you a massage or what's happening? So, certain environments of joy, they're so favorable. They're so favorable, unbelievably favorable for spiritual advancement. So that is what our spiritual teacher has given us as a gift. He has, he has enticed us. He has contagiously uh, produced within us the joy of reduction of wasting energy. It's so, I mean, we are still wasteful. We could reduce it even further. There's many more things, but that's private. That, like when people do special austerities, it's no problem. They're welcome to, but not welcome to rub it into the other person, hey, I was dear than you. I remember one devotee, my god brother, he was reading about reducing the desire for gratification. So, he bought himself a plate in the market, which was this big. And when everybody was sitting there and getting the plate full of shada, he just got just a little, just a little for me. So he ate, I don't know how many days, maybe one week, maybe two weeks, he just ate the little food. And he became increasingly critical. <laughs> and he, then he said, oh, you all eat so much, it's all wasting the energy. Everybody went, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to be austere, you want to show an example. After two weeks, he showed up at the Prashadam time with a plate like this. <laughs> Twice as big as all the others. <laughs> he couldn't do it. So, don't... Don't rub. <laughs> And now the world will hear you. <laughs> huh? Where's the speaker? <laughs> huh? Oh, careful. This is a... Yes. Okay. <laughs> so don't rub it into the others. If you are in austere, if you control your sex, good for you. But don't rub it into the other. Don't make the Grihasta feel bad because he has a family. <coughs> and because he likes to have his wife happy and everything. This is not fair. So be kind with everybody. Do what you do because you want to do it. And understand that everybody else also has a right to like to do what he likes to do. Now, sometimes people say, oh, I like to, I like to go and just do what my mind tells me. Say, yes, that's a common idea. You're not the only one with this idea. But, please, you don't forget that by doing just what you want to do, you may not be very useful to the community. That's why in the material world you may say, oh, 
it costs this much, it costs this much. Actually, it, things shouldn't have a price. Should, things should just move very smoothly and spontaneously. That's what it should really be. But we are maybe not always so trained up for that. So, so we have to become more spontaneous and more responsible. What was that thing again, Swami Maharaj, where we were saying responsibility versus or uh, having to respond for it? You have to be responsible because you believe in it. You're not uh, responsible because you will be held accountable. <laughs> we have in a zoo up here, don't we? Uh, the only difference is we are in the cage and they are free. Uh, hey, what do you think? <laughs> so in a way, you know, when you recognize the right of others to be happy. That is an important, very, very important moment. We, we should have the process of, like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Raja Vidya, Raja Guya, Pavitram Itam Uttamam, so, so what does this shloka mean? You have the translation? Well, not in English, no? This is the king of knowledge. Listen, this is Krishna, Krishna speaking. This is the king of knowledge. I mean, just to say that, wow, the king of knowledge, that sounds like education. Hmm? And it is, hey, who is the Gita? Can you bring up the exact translation? I used to translate, because with the language is always. Give me the translation of the shloka, please. This is the king, Raja Vidya. Oh, it's most confidential, Raja Guyam. Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam. Pavitram ita Uttamam. It is given to the highest, Uttamam. It's the highest of all things. Pratyakshavagamam damyam shushukam. It is happily, oh, here we got it. Sorry, my memory. This knowledge is the king of education. The most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge. And because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is a perfection of religion. It is everlasting. Ah, everlasting and it is joyfully performed. Now this is, the, here you got the key. This we have to send to the Finnish uh, educational ministry, you know. To, today, you know, you, you make this little service for them. With spirituality, that's another story. Face education, it's another story. Viktor Frankl, in, in his uh, understanding of logotherapy, he comes out to say people, when they have a meaning in life, then everything comes together. So we are teaching the meaning of life. I will give you that shloka again so you don't forget it. Actually, you should write it down. This knowledge is the king of education. The most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge 
and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization it is a perfection of religion it is everlasting and it is joyfully performed so what we can say to this we only can give a huge applause to Lord Krishna come on That's not an applause. <laughs> you have to give Krishna a standing ovation. Come on, get up. We are allowed to study the perfection of knowledge. Those comprehension. Which gives you direct perception of the self. And I think this is still too little, but now you can sit down. <laughs> I don't think that you can give a recognition to Krishna's Gita in any adequate way except dancing and chanting and studying and teaching and just feeling joyful about it. That's why I'm sick and tired when the devotees have no desire to give classes. We have temples. We have temples and sometimes in the night nobody wants to give the class. Yeah, what are they? <laughs> What's happening to them? Have they not discovered the joy of speaking on the, the king of knowledge? Or they don't believe it? What's happening? <coughs> so, I insist that you have to be happy preaching. It doesn't matter where. In the school, in the yoga school, in the, in the university, in the private club, in the, uh, in the environment of the World Conscious Pact, in the area of the United Nations of the Spirit. It doesn't matter where. But you preach every day. You read this Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the king of knowledge and the Srima Bhagavatam is the emperor of knowledge. <laughs> and the Chaitanya Chaitamrita it is the postgraduate of the emperor's study. It's the top. So we have these books. We have the Bhagavatam, we have the Gita, we have the Chaitanya Chaitamrita in Spanish. In English, we also have them. Prabhupada already gave them to us. For us to get them into Spanish, that was a different story. That was a separate second story. But you know something? We have those books, but we don't read them attentively. We don't read them. We don't make it our real score to get this knowledge deep inside of our system, to sing those songs really down, down, grounded. We don't. That is our shortcoming. We are also the, kin the kids of the Mickey Mouse uh, education and of the, 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 the television generation. We are the kids of that, we can't deny it. I mean, I was around 12, television showed up in the, uh, my village. It was so nice, there was only one television set in the whole village. And it was in a bar in some guy, some restaurant and and he in the, in the afternoon from five to six or one hour he allowed the kids of the village to come and watch TV there because nobody else had that so they opened their their space and we went to watch less hey oh. <laughs> close the door yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we watched Lassie 
and fury and flipper and things like that. <laughs> Stupid little things, you know? But that, that's how the television generation started, you know? And then it went on and on and on and on and on and on. And finally, 500 TV programs you can get on your tip of your fingers nowadays. I mean, we were crazy with one little program. <laughs> What happens to the kids today? Plus the internet, plus this, plus that, plus... No. no. It doesn't make happy. So what makes happy? The king of knowledge make happy? It's joyfully performed. Here, that's a very important thing. The classes have to be also joyfully performed. The study, yeah, you have to study so you can serve in a better way. If you study just because you have to pass a test, nah. Nah. We have to correct our, our, system in the Utsav not to have multiple choice question. Please you you inform them we must find a different way. Because uh, it's so common multiple choice answers. I always found them stupid. I, I, I like the multiple choice answer when none of the choices are the answer. Well, <laughs> that, that I liked when I but it's just get rid of it. We can change that. <laughs> Still on time, we are not that far. So, yeah, I tell you, I'm in a culture shock. This is so, is such an important thing. Now, we understand our Gurukul system is Guna Karma Vibhagasha. You get educated according to your talents. Like Bhavani, she's very talented with the, with the arts. She, nobody really taught her. She just took, 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 she got it and worked it up in here. And Mantra is a great singer. It's Krishna given to her. And Nitai is a great organizer. And everybody, you know, uh, Vedavati is a great accountant. She likes to look after things to make temples work well. No, like everybody has certain talents <clears throat> and if you like you can increase your talents if you want to serve in different areas now some people don't learn anything they're pretty boring and some people said I'm bored have you heard that you know, when somebody says I'm boring means he is boring person because you can never be bored in this world Look at the flowers and the fruits and the, and the beauty of everything. How can you be bored? You must be sick. You're bored in this world. Look at the beautiful people. And you can talk to them and, and speak about wonderful things. And you are bored. Oh, sorry for you. It's a very big disease, boredness. Yeah. So... Happiness and joy, they come from understanding. Krishna says, it is joyfully performed. Now, what is joyfully performed? Devotional service is joyfully performed. Because devotional service is based on the knowledge. You have that knowledge that now you want to put it into action, your knowledge. This is, this is the very nature of it. So when you are happy about what you are doing, like, I have some duties. Today I had the choice. Do I go out with you on Parikrama or do I make a meeting with some senior sannyasis where they come together celebrating the Vyasa Puja of one? Well, I would much more like to go on Parikrama with you, but for some social convention and the purpose of the Vishwa Vaishnava Raj Shabha, <coughs> it just happens to be necessary that I go to this uh, commemoration of 
a great spiritual teacher who I also knew very well. His name is Bhaktivedanta Vaman Maharaj. So therefore, I can share with you that joy of going to Akruragat. We changed to Akruragat, otherwise we would have had to leave very early and a full day, full day, and some devotee said, that, let's have a little rest, even though, anyhow, this is personal style and personal taste. You know, we have to also find what makes the devotees happy in the Parikrama. Anyway, you're gonna see first Akruragat today. Akruragat is a very, very, very mystical place. Akruragat is where when Krishna, when Akrura took Krishna Balaram out of the Vibraj and he went to bathe in the Yamuna, in Akrura Ghat. And he saw Mahavishnu. And he saw Krishna Balaram. It was something mystical that Krishna Balaram, original form, did not leave Vendam but the Vishnu expansion left to go to. And there's a, Akrura God is very, very mystical. And it is also, <coughs> they have done a very beautiful temple there, a shrine, which you will see today. And after Akrura God, you're gonna go to Jaipur Mandir. No, excuse me, to Bhagal Baba Mandir. Bhagal Mama Mani is the tallest temple in Vietnam and you can walk all the way to the top and take some beautiful shots from there. It's, it's a very nice, it's, a, it's for that reason. Actually Bhagal Baba Mandir started right next here, that little uh, place down the alley where some old people stay, that belongs to Bhagal Baba Mandir. There they started and then they got lots of money and they made this huge temple out there, which is until now the tallest temple, all made in marble. So you can stop there, have darshan, there's one temple on top of the other. And then you go to Jaipur Mandir. Jaipur Mandir is just an architectural piece of Rajasthani architecture, Sri Sri Radha Madhava, built by the king of Jaipur. Now this place is more impressive than the Taj Mahal. Far, by far, it is more intricate and far out. Nowadays, you have the Prem Mandir, which we're going to visit another day. Prem Mandir is outdoing the Jaipur Mandir, but that's a different story. But it was a king of Jaipur who made the, the Jaipur Mandir. So these three temples you're going to visit today, before you come back. And uh, this afternoon, I forgot. Okay, gracias, my friend. So I probably join you for that this afternoon. These are very close temple, but very beautiful, very important sites. Gopal Guru, Dira Samira. One more. Radha Raman, we haven't gone yet. Oh my God, it's, it's unbelievable. There's so many holy spots here. So we're gonna go Dira, Samira, Gopal Guru, and then to Radha Raman. That's it, that's enough. We can't do more. So the Radha Raman, you cannot miss. It. So we have a nice, that's gonna be a very intensive Harinam uh, tonight we're gonna have. So, do we have also not gone to Gopinath Mandir, no? It's, it's too much, you know. The, 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 the Vindavan is so intense, it has so many important things here and there and everywhere. And you, you just can't handle it. You can't be everywhere. It's a, in, <coughs> Some people, they spend the whole month going from one feast to the other. They go for the feast. I mean, we don't go for the feast, we go for the fasting, no? <laughs> no, no, we are going for the spiritual feast. Because <laughs> if you just go for the feast, then it is just uh, eating, 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 and nothing else, no? 
So, it's really something special today. All these places are places of meditation. Now why and how, what benefit do you actually get from going to a place? It's sometimes this question, you know, you go in, in the Kartik season, you see so many places, so many shrines and so many... I tell you, there are increased, increased opportunities for prayer. That's what they are all about. For praying profoundly. So let us pray today, oh my Lord. Please help me. To understand the secret of love which has motivated you to come to these places and your pure devotees to also come and make these shrines of love for you and the books they gave us what deep meaning they gave us I have no capacity to understand anything but I can pray I can cry give me some mercy to understand why so much beauty and love and my heart is still dry what can I do make me an instrument to feel your love to understand your love to distribute your love to apply your love to all the things in my life to all my relationships, to all the wonderful things to do, to help others. I'm a little nobody, but you, my Lord, are everything for everyone. And I'm your little servant. Wherever you have some job to do, Give me a chance to be part of your divine plan. Always yours and very fallen. Begs for causeless mercy of your beloved Shakti. Shima de because I heard from the source of my guru that you listen to her. So I present my pledge to her lotus feet that she may hand it over to you with her special request in our favor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Lama, Hare Lama, Lama Lama, Hare Hare. So, don't forget it. Be happy. Make others happy. Don't forget the king of knowledge. Joyfully performed and joyfully distributed, which gives you perception of the self by realization, which is the purest and which is the most confidential. So if you don't smile, you're doing something wrong. Therefore, smile. I mean smile from the heart, I'm not talking about the salesman smile. Huh? I'm talking about this, this smile from the heart, the joy from the heart, that we are very lucky to be here in the Vrindavan. And another thing, to come to Vrindavan has two reasons. One is 
to spend the months with your spiritual master, which otherwise is impossible be because they always keep running around the world and there's no way to run after them. So the only way you can be a month with your spiritual master is by coming to Vrindavan. Number two reason. To charge yourself with spiritual energy for increased service posture afterwards, wherever you go. So that the love of Prabhupada, the love of Krishna of this place will surcharge you and all your doubts will go away because we are lucky we are in an educational system started 5,000 years ago which is far superior to the Finnish one because even the Finns they really found a great way of understanding education we have not heard of all the Finns running around the world spreading love for God we have heard that from Prabhupada and other devotees like Madhusudan Maharaj, like Bon Maharaj and so many, they really believe in that. And I'll give you one example, Montessori, Maria Montessori, she was another pioneer in positive education from Italy. And in the beginning the Mussolini system, they said, oh he, she's good, she's good. She tries to make the kids happy. But after a short while, she, she understood Mussolini and fascism is bad. So as soon as she gave a little bit critical remarks, she had to escape from Italy. So where did Maria Montessori go? She went to India. And in India she wrote, all I was dreaming of as far as education is concerned, here in India it's already in place. Here in the Gurukul system, this is actually taking place the way it should be done. I'm so happy. And of course she became a vegetarian, if she wasn't one before, I'm not sure. But she, she, she became a vegetarian and thus she's actually a great soul in, on the level of the educational systems. So. So we have a few people, a few uh, people with some enlightenment, but very little. Like Leonardo the Capri, or what's his name? Capri? He, he said, it is better we eat chicken and not beef, because in this way we can reduce the contamination in the world. I mean, I agree with him that we should not eat beef, but I don't agree with him that we should eat chicken. And we could have made a jump, uh, a jump further and said we should really ban, cut down on all meats and all mistreatments of animals. I just saw his, la his latest movie, movie on climate change called Before the Flood. Many good points. National Geographic involved some kind of a propaganda movement, but no spirituality whatsoever. Not one word about God, not one word, no, 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 really ugly. This, all this, all this organ, organized materialism, that's all it is. <coughs> so, I wasn't impressed. But at least I mentioned no beef, a beef. And the, the, the whole picture was not clear, not truthful either. Anyway, that's the way it went. So the news is out. We have to change our lifestyle. And we know how to. So now they have to pay us to teach the world how to change the lifestyle and dance at the same time. You agree, Mahaprabhu does? Good. With you as an ally, we will do it. <laughs> and all the others, of course. No? Live in a simple way and dance at the same time. They already say it. Uh, what was that? Uh, Swami Maharaj just quoted me some big political party saying that if we don't go the way the indigenous people live, we will be lost. 
write something like this? Imagine a German political party saying that we have to live the way the indigenous people have to live or the whole humanity will be lost. Okay, but we live like the indigenous people in a way which is so surcharged with joy to the topmost knowledge. Now the only thing we have to be careful, don't be proud about it. We are proud because it's so nice, but we are not supposed to be proud. We are just supposed to be happy, joyful, and sharing. Thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Oh, it's very early. Hmm? We just started. But, no, we should close here so you get to Akura Ghat and you get the darshan all the way down to Jaipur Mandir. So let's have a breakfast and get out. Guru, they say. Are you bold? <laughs> Are you bold? Without your Are you bold?